High speed running, jumping, kicking, explosive lower extremity movements and lifting objects from the ground are activities where hamstring injuries occur. Keep on watching if you want to know what the 2022 practice guideline recommends. Hi and welcome back to Physiotutors. The estimated incidence of hamstring injuries per 1000 hours of playing lies somewhere between 0.87 and 0.96. Some researchers report an increased incidence of injuries. Most players are 3 to 28 days out, depending on the severity. Re-injury rates are as low as 14% to as high as 63%. When having sustained one in the past, the player is at a 3.6 times higher risk for sustaining another one. The long head of the bicep is the most frequent victim, accounting for around 80% of injuries and often in the muscular tendinous junction. Who's at risk? Obviously the ones that had a previous injury. Uh, furthermore, it appears that age greater than 23 years, ACL injuries, calf strains, and other knee and ankle ligament injuries pose a greater risk. Furthermore, there is the risk factor of reduced fascicle length and stiffness, not flexibility according to general belief. High speed running with abnormal trunk and pelvic postures and motor control might play a role as well. How is it diagnosed? Most often it is an acute injury with a sudden onset of localized posterior thigh pain, tenderness and loss of function. The mechanism at play is usually overload or overstretch. Your patient may have had a popping or tearing sensation. When the mechanism is direct trauma, you should consider a contusion as a differential. Vague insidious pain makes you think of referred pain out of the lumbar spine. Stretching or activating the hamstrings will probably hurt, although these complaints may be absent in complete tears. Make sure to palpate the hamstrings to locate the area of tenderness. When it is at the origin or insertion, you should consider a tendon injury as a differential. You might see ecchymosis and this might scare some patients, however, it is pretty common. Here's a list of differential diagnoses you should consider. Now, what should we assess when the diagnosis is made? First and foremost, we should assess the force output and range of motion after the injury. Force can be measured with a handheld dynamometer and flexibility with a straight leg raise and an inclinometer, starting with the leg at 90 degrees of hip flexion. The location of tenderness should be taken into consideration as well. The more proximal the injury, the longer the return to play time. Clinicians should include objective measures of an individual's ability to walk, run and sprint when documenting changes. The FASH questionnaire is an excellent tool to assess function and its progression after a hamstring injury. The first question you will probably get is when can I play again? We should caution the return to play for individuals who did not complete a progressive comprehensive impairment-based functional exercise program, specifically including eccentric training. Factors to take into account are strength, pain level at the time of the injury, days since the injury, pain-free walking, and an area of tenderness at initial eval to estimate the time to return to play. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. How should we treat it? The evidence clearly supports hamstring strengthening exercises, including eccentrics in the early phase. This is guided by symptoms, of course. Both the load and the range of motion can be progressed if symptoms allow. When thinking of eccentrics, the Nordic hamstring exercise probably comes to mind. This is a very good example, but the exercise program should not be limited to this one alone. Other types of exercises are more agility based or involve trunk stabilization. A return to sprinting program and deceleration drills should be included as well with a progressive increase in speed and distance. There is insufficient evidence to provide clear progression criteria for running and sprinting. The experts thus recommend the as tolerated approach. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I'm Max for Physio Tutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.